Hello, I'm Patrick Ryder. Um, I'm a director and a producer and a writer, and I'm talking on Hellblazer Biz. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, wherever you may be in the world right now. This is Hellblazer Biz, and I am your one and only host, Chris Gordon. Thank you all for tuning in, whether it be on iTunes, YouTube, Podbean, TuneIn.com, Spotify, or Google Play. I am everywhere, baby. <laughs> anyway, now thank you all for tuning in. I welcome each and every one of you. I express my gratitude sincerely to all the support. Whether you're a new person listening in, welcome. I hope you enjoy. Hope you stay. Hope you read some of my other, or read, listen, and watch some of my other interviews after this one. And for those of you who return week in, week out, thank you so, so much. I truly appreciate your support. It's Vital and I, yeah, it's just heartwarming to know I've got the support out there. Thank you. Anyway, this week's guest is exciting for me. He is a multi award winning director and writer for his short films, and I recently had the pleasure of meeting him in person at the premiere of The Valley, which, if you're in the 1% of people I haven't told, I hosted the QA panel for at their world premiere. <laughs> anyway, without further ado, and without further having to listen to me drone on, I introduce you to the talented, comical, and friendly creator of The Code, Chimera, Human, and many more, Mr. Patrick Ryder. Everyone, I have the honour and the privilege and the fun time here with Patrick Ryder, who is a director and an award-winning filmmaker as well, which is fantastic. And he's currently got, at the moment, Chimera, which is going through the festivals, as it well as indeed. many, many more. <laughs> yeah. So, hello. How are you? Hello. I'm good. I'm good. How are you, sir? I'm great, thank you. Again, it's like deja vu, really, isn't it? It's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's always good for a laugh. So, yeah, we'll have them. <laughs> I think this is going to be a fun. This will be a fun chat for everyone to listen to, I believe. And uh, we're just here to, yeah. find, <laughs> to, to find out some more about yourself and obviously yep. your motivations and things like that. And uh, mm-hmm. yeah, and uh, I I can't remember if you've you're aware of my my signature my signature question at the end, which I I will throw at you. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm scared. Out of the blue, don't worry. Okay. <laughs> I have some cracking responses. I'm really looking uh, forward to a good one from yours. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's been so, hyped up now. It's, it's too much. <laughs> excellent, excellent. So, all right. First things first is now, and, and you have been making shorts and films for a, a good few years now. Yeah. So, that's right. yeah. What got you started? What made you think, I want to make film? <laughs> uh, I think it goes back to when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. And I come from quite a big family, so I've got six brothers and a sister. Um, and basically, my brother, who's now in Australia, right. um, he would sit me down and show these classic films. Like, have you seen Jaws? Put that on. Have you seen Alien? Put that on. <laughs> I was about 10 years old. So oh, okay. <laughs> this is back in the day. Yeah, that's it. I've got I've Terminator for my 11th birthday from my sister. <laughs> <laughs> and... Yeah, basically, I've got a love for film, and I've had it ever since, basically. Mm-hmm. And I think I'd watch those films, like I'd watch Spielberg films, like E.T. And, and those type of things, and they were so magical, and they seemed so impossible that you could ever make something like that. You could ever go and make a film, go and get people together and do that. And, yeah, I basically, my career, I, I was an artist, or I still am, mm-hmm. digital artist now. I was a fine artist. Um, but no money in that, unfortunately. <laughs> um, and then I, I got to edit for the BBC and Sky and people like that. Cool. And then I, I realised that, well, hang on, I can edit. I can get equipment. Mm-hmm. Maybe that dream can come true. Maybe I can go make something. All right, fantastic. And so I did. Got some friends together and, yep. and went off and filmed it. And not looked back since. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was, I was actually just going to make one film. That was my theory, make right. a film. It flops. Move on. Yeah. You've got it out your system. Um, 
and we put it into the House of Commons as a fest as a festival at the House of Commons, oh, and okay. and we won that. And that I suppose that what pushed me. I was like, okay, well, you can impressive. you can make something on mm -hmm. not a lot, and you can get some recognition for that from fairly high up people. So maybe. Maybe there is something in it. Maybe we can do something. No, that's pretty cool. Oh, that's not pretty cool. That's bloody awesome. <laughs> to be fair. <laughs> uh, and you're right. It's, it's nice to sort of see that kind of, you know, just and obviously seeing where you've come, where, how far you've come along now, just from that kind of thing. Um, mm -hmm. And I know from my from my side, and you can just when you have that idea. Uh, my my 11 year old lad, who was 10 at the time, for example, he's won two. Two. Oh um, wow! Did he win oh, two or was it one? No, he's won two. He's won two. He, he made a film for school. It's only three minutes. Really short, short. Um, it was about... <laughs> They're the best ones. Yeah, it was a Harry, po Harry Potter type thing. And basically it was all the schools, which are about 17, 18 schools in the county up in North Wales. Yeah. Had to cut, you know, make a little short film about the area of Wales and sort of link it in its history and stuff and this, that and the other. And we took him out and we did it all on an iPhone and, you know, got him to film in it. He did his little speeches. And there's a brilliant bit at the end because I took it from um, that Walking with Dinosaurs. You know, the film where he just keeps laughing, he goes, his little diddy arm, you know, <laughs> that bit. <laughs> well, that's a bit amazing. Of, yeah, the Prostatin yeah. Castle's got a tiny stump. That's all that's left. Is, is I didn't even know. I've been there 20 years. I only found this out when he filmed. There's a tiny stump, <laughs> and that's what's left of Prostatin Castle. And we've got that at the very end. We're saying even Prostatin has got its own castle. And then it's a picture of him just with his natural laugh, which I've managed to catch on camera going, <laughs> Just like, <laughs> and it ended, and he won. He basically won, and he what? What? Um, the guys from Harry Potter kind of thing came up. The the, the production crews, that kind of thing, came up and okay. and worked with the class and worked with the whole year for for a day this year as a result of that. And then from that, his teachers put him in for another one, which was um, uh, North Wales uh, one. I can't remember the name of the thing. It was just a oh, wicked. It was something wicked film festival for like you know young kids and youth and stuff yeah, yeah, like yeah. that. And then it ended up that he, he got selected to be um, shown in that one as well. But they showed it all in school time, so I, we, none of us could actually see it on the big screen. But he made a film and he was like crawling out of the sea because we went to Anglesey and he, you know, him and his little friend running. Uh, <laughs> and it was like, amazing. It was like Shawshank Redemption. It's a little 10, yeah. it was a 10 minute one, that one. It was about a 10 minute film that was put together. We went, you know, we still got it sort of marooned. I'll send you a link. <laughs> so has he got the bug then to go and make more? I think so. Bet yeah, he, I bet he has from that. Yeah, because he, yeah, because he, yeah, well, yeah, he has, and um, because it is, it's, I think, like you say, it is a bug. Once you start doing stuff like that, because I mean, I, I helped obviously a lot in that doing that, and I've got a yeah. bug, um, and I've still got a bug from acting because that's what my passion was back in the day um, when I was when I was young, when I were a lad. <laughs> 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 yeah, <laughs> you know. I think I'm older than you, so I think yeah. I'm, oh, yeah <laughs> Let's no, move you're, on. Yeah, you're not. I'm, for, I'm 43 this year, mate. <laughs> okay. Yeah. See. So yeah. I'm, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. See. So <laughs> when I were a lad, I used to lick, lick gravel off the road. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear, yeah, Monty Python for those who might not know that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the four Yorkshiremen. Uh, yeah, we but, lost <laughs> so yeah, no, it's, but it is a bug, and obviously that's what I was trying mm. to get at. Is that, you know he's he's, he's got this bug as well because it's yeah. and it it does it spurs you on when you do get great feedback on a first film and things like that. Like yourself, I mean, look at you, you've, you've had that in the House of Commons with that first with that first sort of win, uh, and now pretty much all your films, are, you know, you, you, as you've gone on. I suppose though, it's, it sets you up though because now I'm kind of on a a certain level where I think people involved in a project you're in cert expect a certain amount as well from what yeah. you do, a certain quality and a certain mm -hmm. achievement and it, it, of course every film that you make you have to get better there's no point making the next film and it's not quite as good as the last thing you did, yeah. you've got to be technically better better script writer better director, better storyteller you should always be moving forwards Mm-hmm. You know, when I made my first film, I thought it was the best thing ever at the time. Yeah. You know, if I look back at it now, of course it's not. It's it's, it's so many bad things about it. <laughs> but I can't look back at it and, and totally dismiss it because it was one of the reasons why I've met certain people, why I'm here talking to you, mm -hmm. what, why these things happen. It's because of that, because of making that conscious decision to get a camcorder and go and film your mates. You know, that started <laughs> yeah. something. That started a, a ball rolling, so... Excellent, excellent. Yeah. So how have you found that? I mean, obviously, that's you've obviously done it in our several years. How have you found that you've developed yourself and your work? So you have, you know, you've gone out there and you've managed to, you say, you've, I guess it's like you've managed to 
through all the wars and stuff, you can get yourself better equipment and sort of learn more techniques yeah. as well. Is that right? Yeah, like on a technical level, definitely. Mm-hmm. Going from what we did and what we I mean in the space of about five years, that is. Yeah. Going from shooting on a little SD thing to 4K, <laughs> you know, ridiculousness of filming. I mean, we the first film that I did, I had a car explosion and I, I used some special effects of it. It was really bad. It looked, <laughs> it looked terrible. But it was quite... It, it kind of harkened back to something because when we were on set for the code, mm-hmm. we, we genuinely had pyrotechnics that blew up. I don't know how many feet up in the air. This massive explosion. We all had earmuffs for them. Yeah. And I, I just kind of turned to Rich, um, my DOP at the time, mm. and I, I said, it just feels weird for me that I started doing my films pretending to blow stuff up. No. <laughs> I thought that's, obviously, that's not what I was trying to achieve. I don't just want to go and destroy things. <laughs> I'm really yeah, yeah. yeah, first and foremost. But it just showed the progression. It shows where we're going. We're actually making the things that maybe I dreamt about making. We're getting a, li- a little bit closer to those now. All right, excellent, excellent. And, and I mean, you know, has anything gone wrong with the explosions? Like, I only told you to blow the bloody doors off. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, the main actor did die and we had to replace him. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. there, was actually, there was actually a moment. It was quite scary for me because I haven't really used pyrotechnics in that sense before. Yeah. Yeah, ones that really could be dangerous. Right. And we worked with some amazing guys. There's a guy called uh, Ronnie, and he's worked on films like Saving Private Ryan. He's worked mm-hmm. on Band of Brothers, worked on other things. And there was an explosion at one point where someone, a German throws a, a stick grenade. Right. And Rob and Kev, the, the team and actors, were supposed to run over this explosive, and then he detonates it, and they get a certain distance away. Yeah. He told us how far away, and I said, that's fine. And then when we said action... They literally stepped on it and it blew up. <laughs> and there was a moment where, because I had these earmuffs on, it was mm. silent. I, I didn't know whether, the, you know, arms and legs were going to come down. I was just like, <laughs> did that work? But it did, you know. So, but then, you know, he, he's a he's a trained guy. He knows what he's doing. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it, it turned out fine in the end. So. All right, fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine the, the, the your, your face is probably white as a sheet in this <laughs> slow motion. <laughs> no, she's yeah, like, oh, okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah, You're moving on, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, who've been your influences then in filmmaking? Like you say, you mentioned some of the early the greats like Spielberg and stuff, and I'll mention him shortly as well for something else. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, no, Spielberg, Spielberg, definitely for me, hands down, was a massive inspiration for me. Mm-hmm. I mean, there was a time where every film that he made was a, was sort of a landmark film, and it's pretty amazing for a film director to look back at his career and go, the, the, the number of hits, the number of films that he did were great films. Yeah. You know, it's they pretty were. amazing what he achieved. And I, I think in modern day, uh, I mean, he is modern day, obviously, but um, Nolan as well, Christopher Nolan, I'd mm. say, was another big influence, because for, for me, I feel like he doesn't really, very rarely does he, hit a duff note you yeah. know most of the time you come away from his film you know what you're going to expect yeah it's not going to be a comedy but, it, but you <laughs> do come away you thought about something it's made you think it's made you question a few things and mm-hmm. i think that's you know i mean i remember watching the prestige and in the shower the next day going oh that's what it meant you know <laughs> like because it stayed with me yeah and i think that's that's a sign of a great film and a great filmmaker to do oh that. yeah definitely i mean in, in the one he just did recently was Dun- with dunkirk was just dunkirk someone- yeah, my granddad was one of the last dozen or so off the beach of Dunkirk, and I never realised how bad it was. So, I mean, obviously it was a lot worse than what he portrayed in the film, but even so, that was just like, what? You know, and it was, there was hardly any dialogue, and I think that was, that worked. I mean, the soundtrack, yeah, amazing. Yeah, it was like, just everything. a pure soundtrack yeah. rather than actual dialogue. And I mean, you know, in fairness, my, my missus turned around to me, because I said, I didn't even know Tom Hardy was in it, I didn't realise he was the pilot, and she goes... I wouldn't have come and seen it if I. <laughs> she goes, of course he's in it. She goes, I wouldn't have seen it if Tom Hardy hadn't been in it. <laughs> <laughs> he just had that mask on the whole film. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I, I really didn't recognise him. It could be like, anyone. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, you've got some greats, and I mean Spielberg as well. And I think I don't know if you've seen it. Yeah, you know, Ready Player One. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, I, I saw that. Of course. The <laughs> night, yeah, yeah. I went to see yeah. it last Saturday, and um, talking, you know, just mentioning Spielberg then, but yeah the old classics that he's got and obviously you know every film um has come through but then ready player one come out and oh my god uh, i just came out there with it i was just the, the best film i have seen in a long long time because it was it was of our generation obviously spielberg yeah. is 
and I just sat there and my missus didn't understand that to explain to my son a couple of the references in there and said uh, <laughs> I'm probably not going to say any spo- I'm not going to say any spoilers for anyone who might not have seen it yet. <laughs> yeah. I really want to I'll say it offline there's just some things in there yeah, <laughs> yeah there's Good. some things in there but every single <clears throat> scene I was just like oh my god I was just and the name and the th- things like you know very very cleverly done very clever name very pl- yeah very placement very, of and, everything and it was nice that he did that but he also had a coherent story he had something yes. following along it was good how he how he, I mean obviously it was great how he did it so I and it was nice for like you said for people of the generation that we grew up with those type of things yeah exactly it yeah. was sort of magical just these little things happen you go ah oh, yeah I forgot yeah. about that <laughs> exactly yeah, that yeah. Great. Uh, and yeah. yeah and yeah it's just yeah and so yeah like you say certain things come through and the characters are like oh my god I remember that <laughs> <laughs> and there was one point in the film I'll tell you offline because um, there was one point in the film that there's only nine of us in the cinema because it's a local cinema, sadly, and they don't people don't support it as much, which is wrong. Um, mm. They got the big ones. We've got a gorgeous little cinema, and uh, there's only nine of us in. And there's one part we cried with laughter, literally howled <laughs> with laughter, um, <laughs> and no one else did. Uh, so like, uh, <laughs> yeah, you got the joke. Yeah, you it was like it. yeah, just it was just sit back in the chair and just. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so you know, obviously, they're, you know, that's great to hear that like, they're kind of inspirations. And I can see from watching Human, um, yeah. definitely Human, I can see that quite kind of inspiration in the stories, in, in where it's, you know, that kind of genre and things where it can all mix yeah, in like that. Yeah, kind of like, yeah, I mean, I suppose that kind of uh, things like Iron Giant and E.T. Yeah. and all that sort of thing. And I mean, we're working on it. I mean, it's kind of top secret at the moment, but we actually are in behind the scenes we're actually working on the feature for that film oh, okay um which is a bit it's very different from the short so it's mm-hmm. not if people are expecting it to be carrying on to that it's not it's a whole it's a completely different sort of film but it it, it uses some of the same elements from that short that we thought worked so. all right excellent look forward cool. to that <laughs> that'd That's be good <laughs> <laughs> so if you could work with or could have worked with obviously because people might have passed away anyone at all in the industry who would it have been and why I'm probably going to be really boring and, and, and go back to Spielberg again, I think. <laughs> oh, come on. Seriously? <laughs> it's the only guy in the entire thing. I mean, I think people like... Um, I suppose you look at people like Scorsese and people like that. Mm-hmm. That is that generation of, of filmmakers. If I could kind of go out for a meal with those... Like, just yeah. kind of go, how, you know, how did you do that? You know, you, you kind of... You all came from the same school of thinking and you... you you all carved a certain genre mm. and a certain thing, and I think it's pretty amazing. Yeah, actually. I'd still like to meet Fritz Lang because um, I still think he was the father of uh, that sort of. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I studied German at uni, so this is where I know I did German <laughs> part of it was film, and obviously we had to study 1930s and 20s films. Mm. And Metropolis was Fritz Lang, yeah. and I, I still hold that as one of the best films ever <laughs> because it, it, it still holds up today with its class divisions and. You know, supposedly we're not supposed to have class division. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's, but yeah, that was the, the technical advancing. Uh, I think he was really quite advanced for his time as well. So, so that, I mean, especially those those sort of films. I mean, these days it's a lot easier for someone, for anyone actually, to go and get your phone or c- camera and make stuff and, yeah. and make decent stuff. But back then. There wasn't any of that, so it's pretty amazing when you see. I mean, look at things like um, like Awesome Wells when you shoot mm. scenes and he would take flooring out of buildings and stuff to fit cameras into them for one camera shot that he yeah. wanted. <laughs> yeah, he'd rip up the the flooring for it, and it's it's that level of detail people would go to to get their vision across. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, and talking about getting a level of detail. Perfectly mm. fits into the next question there, Patrick. Okay. Let's think of that. Let's, uh, <laughs> That's smooth. Seamless. Yes, that seamless. Was, yeah. I didn't even know. <laughs> so obviously, I mean, I've seen a couple of your films, A Human and Chimera, mm. are the ones that I've yeah. watched recently. Okay. Uh, and stories aside, because the stories are fantastic and they're in their own right, but like you said, to get something right, the production quality is absolutely spot on. From ever- the cinematography, the score, the lighting... Everything about um, the two that I've seen was just yeah. brilliant, and it really draws you right in um, to fo- you know to, to the actors themselves and obviously the story. Then, so how long does it take to film? I think mean, because there's what what twenty minutes long, twenty five minutes long. So how long does it actually take um, to make one? They were very. I mean, I suppose they're very different films. So Human 
this is quite funny. Human, I didn't actually have a film crew. This is this is how ridiculous it was. I was the sound man, the video right. man, <laughs> editor. Well, I was everything basically. I was like a one man band doing that film because of certain situations came about where I had to step in and do these things. Um, so I had no idea how that was going to turn out, and that film took me. It took us months to build the robot. So Alex Phillips, yeah. amazing um, guy at building things, he built that robot mm-hmm. suit. You know, it took all that detail was him. Um, but then it took me a long time to edit because every movement was a sound effect. <laughs> and, you know, and there was lens flare and all this JJ Abraham yeah. stuff everywhere. So it was all had a certain look to it. Mm-hmm. Whereas Chimera was much bigger crew. You know, Richard Oakes is, you know, I mean, like, everyone sings his praises. They should because the guy's a genius. Um, Isn't it Richard yeah, Oakes I, the one who did the artwork for Ready Player One? Am I right? Is that the one? Or is that someone else? I can't he remember. Should have. You know, can't he should have been there. If he wasn't, <laughs> it's a cr- crime against <laughs> humanity. Um, but it was it was a different sort of film because we had quite a big, quite a bigger crew and yeah. we shot it over two days, Chimera. Right. Whereas Human was, was shot over about four or five days, but they were weeks apart. You know, okay. So it was a different sort of way of filming. I prefer the Chimera way of filming, where we yeah. come in, get the set, shoot it back to back, because it's better for the actors, it's better for everyone. Yeah, it can really. stay, you can stay in character a lot more, and you can sort of... Well, that's stay, it, stay yeah. I mean, it, especially story. Chimera is a character-driven film. Yeah. You know, it's a film all about the actors and their emotions, and, mm-hmm. and you have to give them space and, and allow them to, to you know do their thing that they're trained to do. So. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Sorry, I know you can see me making coffee noises. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going on mute. So yeah, no, that's for, yeah, no, you're right, and it is um, and because I say if you, I guess if you're filming something like that and it is over like several weeks, then if the actors have got other projects on as well, it can that can obviously then cause stuff and it can. It's a conflicting thing, and yeah. like especially especially Chimera. We had the actors that we got involved; they're all very busy people doing other projects, so. I, it's hard enough to get everyone there for two days. <laughs> it's better once you've got them in and you've got them locked into that, make sure we get everything that we need when yeah. we're there. Um, yeah. yeah, we work non-stop. To be honest, everyone put their heart and soul into that, so I can't can't thank them enough. No, no, that's fine. I mean, I was on a film, did, is this, a film called Is This Now, which was filmed last year, and I know that it was only I was only there for a day, um, but they filmed it quite a lot. And I know on that one day, we went, 12 hours right into the night and they were adamant they were going to get the final shots in before it was coming dark and they were like no we've got to get it in because obviously you know again it was just the time like you just said getting yeah. everyone in and getting everyone's time locked in because after that day people were here there and everywhere and it was just like we've got yeah to get this. much harder yeah better yeah. to try and get it all all at once it was yeah so yeah two hours lying on the floor with my hands behind my back tied behind my back on a concrete cold concrete warehouse floor <laughs> <laughs> yeah, waiting for them just to get that one shot <laughs> yeah there you go. oh we've missed it so yeah. cut it out yeah I hope it's not I bet I, I keep asking the director I said have I been cut yet because <laughs> I'm sure <laughs> oh, excellent I mean you know going on with human talking about human a bit more uh, yeah. it is a great film as I said, I've watched it very recently and uh, <laughs> you know it, what eight times an award winner including an LA film award and nine film. times actually nine yeah, times it's, now it's, film best director it's done, best it did about th- coming up to nearly 30 festivals as well and it um wow. yeah I mean you, you don't know I didn't know what the reaction was going to be of that film because it's it's not for me, it's kind of a slow, childlike sort of film. Mm-hmm. I think some people might watch that film expecting the robot to turn evil or all this <laughs> stuff. Down. But it's not that sort of film. It's it's more like a film. It's just a nice film. Yeah. And a lot. To be fair, a lot of the films that I do aren't. A lot of my films end quite abruptly, and maybe mm-hmm. people kind of go, <laughs> "Okay." But I wanted to make a film where I could show it to my kids and they yeah. could watch it. And I mean, the first film that I really won big was a dance film called Shift mm-hmm. uh, and Madonna found it and selected it and wow. did all this stuff yeah and that won a lot of stuff and that that was the yeah. film that really put us on the map um <laughs> yeah big shout out to del mac by the way he was the choreographer <laughs> on that and he's amazing so. fantastic that's, yeah. that's brilliant madonna you know to have someone like madonna pick it up and just <laughs> we thought it was a fake email because obviously you get an email and it's from madonna you yeah. <laughs> yeah. put that in the joke man <laughs> no it was it was real yeah it was real yeah, not the fall of Madonna with a bit. No, I'm not going to go there no. either. 
<laughs> no, no, but this, seriously, that is absolutely, you know, you just couldn't mm. wish for anything better for a film. And obviously, you know, to, to get picked up like that. Yeah. Um, and it's it's the one thing I keep doing my show for because I'm just praying that one day someone's going to see this thing on Twitter and go, whoa! <laughs> and just, <laughs> you know, um, I've already, I've already tried James Corden. I even I told his publicist when I asked him to come on the show, she's like, no, he's busy. And I said, but please, I said, it was what a great opportunity, Corden and Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> you sold it there. Yeah, no, he should have no. took it <laughs> yeah, still came back and said no. But <laughs> Um, but with human as well, like you say, it's a very it's a childlike movie, childlike experience. It's it's, it's an emotional film. I say I was quite I was moved at the end of the film um, without obviously telling people about it, but I was, it wasn't, and it was moved mm. because I, you you really can relate to all the characters, and again, that's a testament to the production value, and obviously, but the the the, the ability and the skills of the actors involved to actually get you drawn into their characters. Well, it's, it's- it's also quite a bit harder when you do short films because you're trying to tell a a backstory and a coherent story, and you've got to do a start, middle, and end. You don't have to actually. Mm. You can do a short film that makes no sense. It doesn't matter. But I, I personally, I make, yeah. I try and make mini, mini sort of films where they kind of they've they've got that kind of like a mini movie mm-hmm. type thing. Um, so yeah, it's, it's difficult, but I don't. I, I hopefully we got it across a bit. But. Yeah, no, it did come out. I was going to say that as well. With making short films, it really is more difficult because whereas you've got all the you know, feature films, you've got, it's still difficult, very difficult, but you've got like an hour and a half, two hours to fit everything in. You can expand mm. on storylines. Like you just said, trying to fit the whole backstory and everything in that you can, as much as you can in 20 minutes and keep it yeah. to engage in. Uh, and Human does do that. So does chimera uh <laughs> you know it does actually keep you it's in a different way i suppose chimera in a different way yeah it's a different, it's a very way of different film yeah yeah they're, they're film. totally it's like chalk and cheese they are you know the, the two genres the two types of film are very very different but yeah. in the in both ways they do get you there and i mean the aspects of the context of the the dialogue and everything as well just really sort of make mm. things home and the one i was going to bring in i mentioned x files before is because i i watched this but over the last week, I binge watched the X Files new season, and I watched episode seven, which I absolutely adore. Oh, the silent, the, the, the silent, silent, the, the, the silent yeah. one. And I was thinking, human is a ton, you know, it's the complete opposite because it's all AI, but it's obviously showing the human side and things like you know, and a nice side. Uh, Whereas the X Files yeah, just ah oh, killed me laughing. Free. That's <laughs> it was just pure brilliance. You know, I mean. <laughs> Um, and yeah, I mean, it, I mean, you know, uh, you you must have made a decent film for me to be comparing it to, like, <laughs> to the X Files. You know? But then again, it's funny because, uh, like, I, I probably bored people by talking about that show. But that that inspired me not only be making films and TV, but it actually got me through hard times in my life. Mm. For a t- and it's really weird to think back that, that a TV show could do that. Yeah, you know, each week yeah. you'd go. Do you know what? I'm having a bad week, but I've got that to look forward to. Um, yeah, I know. So exactly I've got a lot. To, I've got a lot to thank for that. Yeah. So, um, and even things like Black Mirror and stuff now are amazing, amazing shows. And you can see the comparison where they took they took ideas from that show. Like everything has really. Yeah. You know, lo- lo- I mean, so would... much stuff is just not copied it, but it's been influenced by it certainly. But. <clears throat> Excuse. Oh, sorry. I... <laughs> the only time I didn't mute. Yeah, sorry. No, the yeah, you're right because it's the X file. I mean, I was an X file with a PH um, since the beginning of 1991, and that again, it took me. I was what I was a teenager at the time, so it was obviously school bully and things like. So it was. It was one of those. It was every week. Just I know the X files is coming on. I know how sad that might seem to people, but it is. It was. A, it was an escape. It was a pure escapism, and it actually helped me because I did my. First, I did. I was in a musical when I was yeah. 16, and I was Drake the Butler, and thanks to Mulder. Doing that episode, uh, if you can ever remember, I think it must have been in early seasons. He was someone else's pretender had jumped into Mulder's body. Oh and it, yes, and he was in the room, and he's like, you know, look, flipping up his badge because I came in. I was like, Daddy Warbucks, sir, it's the F B I, and I was just like, <laughs> and everyone apparently said, you said that with such disdain, perfect acting. I said, that's copying Mulder. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like never I say that. that. Take the credit. Yeah. I was like, I learned that off Mulder last week on the X Files. I said, oh, it's not that good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, but he is very good. And obviously, you know, obviously going back to the episode seven, if people haven't seen it, watch it because it was great. But obviously, mm. you know, but yeah, to compare the two, it's the it's the contrast it was what I was trying to get at. The difference contrast of AI and and how how it can be taught <laughs> so you could you could you could go that route i mean when we human originally was going to be a dance film 
okay. about a robot. Mm-hmm. And and before that, it was actually going to be a film about someone who's kept prisoner in a room and they don't they don't know about the outside world. So it had there's been all these different elements that kind of it, it evolved into something. Yeah. In the end, but yeah. All right. Cool. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, what it evolved, I can see bits of elements of dance still in there, um, which was quite <laughs> that's, that's yeah, funny. Yeah. That, that dance, really. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, it, it's but again, it's you know the production of the whole thing. I was actually I was blown away by it because you know you, you see your short film and stuff, and then you, it comes out with the same kind of qualities that you see, you know, of major studios and things. That's what it. That's how it appears when it comes on. And mm. It was just it was really well done, very well done. So. Oh, you, thank you. Yeah, so I was gonna say your entire team on that were great, but that, that was you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I will say to more personally yeah. later. Yeah. You go around and look at yourself in the mirror. Thank I you. I mean, yeah, but there weren't been the team. I mean, I'd say for that film, the team with Alex who did the robot did mm-hmm. so much work on it, and everyone else like Layla and Nadia and uh, Christy, all the people who had to stay in that freezing, you know, factory. <laughs> you know, but they, but they all got through it, and yeah, appreciate yeah. it. <laughs> Excellent, that's cool. And obviously, moving with Chimera, which is your—I wouldn't say it's your latest one because you've got another one coming. Um, <laughs> Chimera, <laughs> Chimera is obviously the one which has been featured at the moment in quite a lot of festivals. And it's, again, you've got Romford. I'm just naming a few: Romford yeah. Film Festival, Out the Can Film Festival, where it's up for Best Director, Best Actress, Supporting Actress, Supporting Actor, Score and Post, and, and obviously the Rob Knox Film Festival as well. It's just gone to Cannes as well. And it's Cannes. Cannes. Oh wow! So that's yeah, that's, that's, that's like the major global yeah, film festival. Yeah. So that's got to be oh how does that feel since it's first it feels time good. It, feels, it, it feels good it feels good yeah i mean it's like i, w- I wouldn't say like get numb to things but it, i think when you originally first put a film in and it gets selected mm-hmm. you punch the air <laughs> and now now i kind of i put it in and i'm very happy about it but i yeah. it's less about me celebrating now it's more about if someone if another actress or an actor won something for a film that i did that means more to me than me winning something yeah. i'd rather because they're the ones who took their time out and mm-hmm. did it I, I i always wanted to do it and take time out but they <laughs> they selected to do that so uh, yeah it's good no, it's, you're right it's nice to see that as well because i mean um, especially with independent film and independence a lot of the actors out there i mean uh i'll, I'll name drop the landscape of lies with the knights paul and paul and diane knight oh, that paul knight, done, yeah yeah yeah, because I'm, I, yeah I, i've chatted to him that's where I ended up with people telling me that they knew who I was, like Danny Midwinter, and I was like, <gasps> you know. <laughs> and obviously, that you know, like you say, it's 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 pushing across, and 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 it, and I think that's one thing the independent sort of and world, especially in the UK, is very much of an enjoyable part to be of because everyone pushes each other. It's not, it's it's like a family because you work, everyone works hard, hmm. but everyone supports each other, and everyone tries, you know, they give. There's not. It's not all take, take, take. Which um, in some in, you know some parts of the industry, and even some industries, which I well, think what, what you all find that the people, the people who do take a lot from other people, uh, they they do. They obviously do make it in things. But I feel like those people at a certain time they fall away because they don't have those other people supporting other people. Yeah. You need you need everyone around you. You need it. You need to be decent and good to people. And I think that's my philosophy on film. Kind of like just surround yourself with good people help them as much as you can because you never know when you might need them exactly exactly and I, you know that is that's a it's a great ethos to have and it's it's not i wouldn't say it's a rare ethos because most people i speak to have that same sort of thing but it's definitely in the independent circuit because every time i meet people or talk to people like yourself you know then it creates a sort of it, well it creates a friendship or it creates a con- contacts that you can keep on and like you say it's ones yeah and i know for some of people have come back and again because it's um, a great act- uh, not great. An actress told me this great quote, and it's like a lot of people are there to ride the coattails, but it's the ones who ride the bus with you at the beginning are the ones you should always keep with you. Mm. Um, and that's I thought that was such a perfect quote, and it's it's great because, and I know from months I've been doing this three years, and some people who were there at the beginning, and some who I supported at their first films. Um, mm. Mark Zamet, for example, I'm friends with him now, and obviously he was his first film. I think Pandora. Oh, Marcus, I mean, he's done yeah, like- such, and he's such a a giving guy back and he he's always yeah. there to you know he's always there he will he'll always support now and i know that that's a symbiotic thing because there's a lot of giving and you know and sharing and, and helping <laughs> it's quite nice because people like mark um we kind of him and me started around the same time with where we were trying to go with our yeah. career so it's, it's nice like I, I consider him 
a friend above everything else. Like, you know, I'd always step in and try and help him, and it, he'd do the same for me. So it's it's nice. We, like yeah. you said, a little family. It is. Or a big it is. family. A huge family. <laughs> well, it is, it is a big but, family. Yeah. There's a lot of people out there in the, in the, yeah. <laughs> in the wind vent. That's it. And I think it's a difference as well, because I think especially in this, there's a lot more passion. Um, yeah. regard from yourself as like filmmakers right through to the actors and that shows through much more in independent sort of films and independent shows and even in shorts it's the passion people are there because they are passionate about what they do and they're passionate about what the, the craft itself uh, and they're all you know and I think that definitely shines through uh, I'm not saying people who earn millions and multi-millions in Hollywood aren't passionate but I'm pretty sure but you, that you, you said it you, yourself yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah but like actors wouldn't you wouldn't lay on the floor of a, a warehouse for, for eight hours for, you know, for a sandwich or whatever. If you weren't passionate about it, people do it because they want to be there and they want to do it. Exactly. So, exactly. You know? Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. And like, like, and, uh, from, well, yeah. so I'm pimping myself out. I'm quite happy to. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is, this is how this is going. Okay. Yeah, this is how That's it's good. going. I'm good. quite happy. Oh, yeah, I'm more than happy to to put myself out for another show, but <laughs> in another film uh, audition, <laughs> which I will do. I'll, I'll go. You know, I'll, I'll be doing that anyway. I want to try and do some more of that. But obviously, even my show, I do things because I love it. Like um, the premiere, which we went to. I, yeah. You know, I went to that, and I mean, for me, that was a huge honour for what I did, whether I did it right or not. Everyone keeps telling me I did it fine. I do think, and I was looking at my photo and thinking, because I'm like, right, I've learned my lesson. Do not use your phone for your notes. Get flashcards, and it looks a lot more professional. <laughs> I saw the pictures, and it was just me standing looking at my phone. And I was like, oh, <laughs> that guy up there, he's just like, <laughs> he's just, he's just watching. He's looking, he's watching Facebook while he's talking. <laughs> But yeah, just so you know, um, things like that. I was, I really that's my first time doing it, and I I mean I was nervous, which I think showed. But I th- it was a great great opportunity, and and it was because of the passion and the support of everyone involved that I'd love to do it again. And you know, yeah. and I think that's what the encouragement from people, and this that's definitely something we need more in the industry. And um, thankfully, I say most of the people I speak to have, you know, are that way inclined and do that, which yeah. is great. Yeah. It's, um, so yeah, it's awesome. And <laughs> kind of exhausted that topic now. <laughs> yeah, done. Yeah. So, what kind of inspired you to write the storyline for Chimera? Because um, it is very different to what the, the way the story came about was this: me and Nadia, uh, we meet up to ch- chat about films and think mm-hmm. up ideas. And in the space of about ten minutes of, of talking. Uh, we were getting napkins. We were writing down. We've just come up with a genius <laughs> idea. It came about that quick. It was, right. And we couldn't have done that. This is what we talk about networking with people and going and meet people. Mm-hmm. I meet a lot of actors. I'm a lot, I've met some of the best people in my life from going out and meeting them. Yeah. And that's the reason why we meet them, because we wouldn't have come up with that idea if we did it over Facebook chat. Like, hey, how you doing? I've just yeah. had an idea of sitting here watching TV. Mm-hmm. But the fact that we were talking of, to each other that's how it came about this yeah. idea um, and it evolved again it evolved it wasn't it, it played on films that we love so things like One Flew the Cuckoo's Nest mm-hmm. and um, Girl Interrupted and all that sort of thing like we looked at films yeah. we kind of went we loved those films and this idea could work it was a ambitious film and they're complicated mm-hmm. a really complicated film to try and get an understanding of what's happening yeah you know, in the yeah. space of 20 minutes like it's really complicated there's loads of backstory and loads mm-hmm. of I mean, most of a lot of the film is due to the the audience are trying to catch up. You're constantly mm. one step behind, going, "Why are they there? What's this? What's that?" Yeah. And it's like a it's like a mystery type of film. Like a so, I, I wanted to do that film where the audience think they understand what's happening, and then you pull the rug from under them and go, "That's not what was happening. This is what's <laughs> happening." <laughs> yeah, 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 and and do that to them because I like that L- little twists and turns and things. I mean. Like M. Night Shyamalan did it great in his early career. Mm-hmm. That kind of thing where you you play the audience along and then you go, aha. You know, and that's <laughs> what we wanted to do. And hopefully... Yeah, so I mean, like you're saying, obviously with... Um, and uh, Talking about the... Uh, how your, you know, obviously the the film came about chatting. I think that's something that is lacking. Uh, in our, and again, the X-Files episode showed that perfectly in how we, you know, today, everyone's relying so much on technology. Mm. But... I find it because I work in IT during the day and I'm like a project manager type thing and you talk to people and that's the one thing I've always enjoyed doing is being able to bounce ideas off and you can only do that when you're face-to-face chatting to someone. Like you say, you've come out with the idea of the film of Chimera 
because mm. you were bouncing ideas, and I think that's a vital piece of communication that I don't, you know, I, I'm scared that we're, we're losing as a, as a as a as a race because of technology. Um, and I, yeah, and, I, and and that's you said it was about a race. I think that's how social media is. I think everyone sees their career or where they're going is a race, mm. and people are constantly posting things, kind of like. Sometimes people feel like if I haven't posted for a day, I'm a failure. I yeah. need to show that I've done something today <laughs> worthwhile. And it's quite nice, actually, now to, to take a step back and say, no, I'm not going to... If I've got nothing to say, yeah. I won't talk. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly, um, exactly. But I, yeah, I, I mean, it's a great... I couldn't live without it because obviously it... it you can show your movies, you can get your mm-hmm. word out. Same for you when, you know, yeah. you get to talk to people and get that out. But also if there's a line between that and physically meeting people and actually doing it the yeah, old-fashioned exactly. way of actually <laughs> exactly. getting to know people. Because I wouldn't, anyone I've worked with in films, I've met them before I've started filming. Yeah. So, Andrew Lee Potts, I went to go and meet him first, you know. Actually, Angela, I hadn't met before. That was the one, that was the one off probably. But right. most, most people I'd, I'd gone out and I'd met and I'd had a coffee and I'd talked about life and yeah. dreams and all this stuff and then, then it feels like when you're on set you understand a bit more mm, definitely definitely. Um, there's something to be said much said about you know interaction <laughs> that's it that's it that's how all these things come about though and I feel like that's all the best stuff that I've done is from just getting to know those people personally so they can share their ideas and stuff Exactly, it's, it's how it works. And now you mentioned Andrew Lee Potts, and I can't even speak now. Andrew Lee Potts, because um, yeah. obviously he's in Chimera. Um, mm-hmm. I've, I mean, I've met the guy several times, and he is, he is a generally really nice guy, and he's yeah. very hardworking, and he's very talented as well. Um, so how did how did he? Was he easy to persuade to come into it? <laughs> I actually went to him with a different project originally, right? Um, and we got on, and we talked about different projects. We wanted mm-hmm. to work on something. And like all filmmakers and people, you have these different points where people kind of fade back and people fade in. Yeah. And then this film came about and he was the only person that I went to for that role. Right. I didn't want anyone else. Yeah. So I just said, look, Andrew, I've got this this role and it's kind of, I think it's made for you in a way. Mm-hmm. Um, and why he's such a great actor is because the script was, was, was great for him anyway, but it's the way that he delivered the lines, the believability of it, yeah. Um, you know, first take, every take. You know, you, you could use any of those takes. To get this guy is <laughs> just, yeah, he's great at what he does, and I, I would happily work with him again. Excellent, excellent. No, he's, yeah. he's so, so I've met him at Comic Con, so it's not in the same yeah. professional working. <laughs> but sorry, he's, he's got a face on because he has to do for the fans and stuff. But you know, I, I mean, he was a genuinely nice guy. He's, he's you go to a Comic Con and you can kind of, I know, you can, it sounds horrible. You can tell some of the, the ones who. Who are in it for the for the for the ones who are there for the fans? Most of them are there for the fans, and they'll talk, you yeah. know. But there are some. I mean, um, Marion Margoyles. <laughs> 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 I will name drop. But I didn't. I'm, I'm only saying that because I took. I was standing in the queue to get her autograph, so I was actually going to pay to go and see her. <laughs> and I took a picture of her from the queue, and she saw me, and she turned her back. At that right, just like you said with um, Chris Pratt before, she physically yeah. turned, but she was in the queue at Comic Con for people to get photos, you know, to go and autograph. But she physically turned her back and then got the aide to come and tell me off for taking a picture. Wow! So I just turned around and I said, "Well, you can <laughs> me paying fifteen quid for an autograph now, can't you?" <laughs> I will go over there where the guy is talking to people and actually quality time with people. <laughs> but that's it. I think they're they're coming to see someone. The reason why people go there is because these people are, in a lot of ways, they're their heroes. Yeah, they are. You know. Yeah, you're going to meet people who who you look up to and you admire, and you don't want that person to disappoint you when you meet them. No, exactly. I was disappointed. <laughs> there. Whereas, like, so people like um, I'm going to name drop again, like Matt Ryan. You know, if he sees me when he's there, we've been, he's been in my show several times now, so we kind of have this like little symbiotic thing. But if he sees yeah. me, he was walking down the stairs, and he's like, "Chris, big hug, arm round." But yeah, th- so it's it's definitely that kind of thing, and you know, it's 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 again, it's the relationship and how you manage that with people, uh, and moving on. But yeah, Andrew Lee Potts going back to him because that's what it's about. Is he he was that type? He was like the Matt. You know, he's he's giving hugs out. He's always friendly with everybody, and that's how he come across. So it's well, nice I, to I see. I helped him because he um he's been working on his his wireless TV series. Yeah, yeah, it's really been... great work on that. And I, because I'm a designer and artist, I helped him out doing some poster art and stuff. All right, excellent. And um, 
I suppose in a way that's kind of how it works with people as well. Like I, I, I was helping him out with that, and then yeah. then we got talking, and that's just how things work, really. Yeah. But prit pro quo, Clarice. <laughs> 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 Love it. Yeah, sorry, you can tell I'm a film. I'm, I'm a geek as well. <laughs> <laughs> geeks oh, of the... Yeah, geeks of the core. <laughs> After Chimera, obviously, in speaking about Andrew, we've got your next movie, which is in post production, which is The Code, uh, yeah. which is a wartime film. Um, mm-hmm. And obviously, another stellar cast. With, with fan, you know, I've seen the artwork being shared, and that's how Jacob and I got in touch because I shared a picture of him when I was reaching out to interview you, and then Jacob friend requested me, so I was like, whoa! <laughs> That's pretty cool, I'll send a picture Jacob's out. Jacob's great. great <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, you've got a great stellar new award and other people in there as well, so you've got great stellar cast in there. What can you tell us about the code? <laughs> Without spoiling it. <laughs> Just silence, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> Tumbleweed. <laughs> you know, it's funny that the code was actually written, I actually came up with the idea for that film years ago, about four years ago. Mm-hmm. This idea about this story that I can't tell you. Um, and <laughs> this is going to be so interesting for anyone listening. Basically what happened was I, I kind of clocked on and realised if you're going to make a film and set it in a period you know, of history yeah. like that, you can't get it wrong. Right, you know, yeah. Costumes, mm-hmm. weapons, everything. Get that wrong, you're going to be... You know, yeah, gonna, yeah. People aren't going to love you for that. <laughs> so I kind of put it on hold because I didn't know how am I, how am I going to do that? Mm-hmm. How am I going to do that justice? And it's only, again, from networking and talking to people, we got linked to someone who has got costumes, who has got pyrotechnics, who has got all the legitimate things that you need to make it look right. Yeah. But then we can go and make it, go and make the film. So I went and spoke to Cheryl Neve, who mm-hmm. we, I worked with her on the doorman. I told her my idea. And then me and Kevin, Kevin Leslie, who's just the man, we, we'd work together. We're, we're you know, we we run little glass together and stuff. Yeah. So we kind of, we kind of felt like, okay, let's, let's go cast this thing and go make it. And we got, we went and filmed it up in Cumbria. Mm-hmm. It was freezing. <laughs> I it can was, imagine. I've never experienced cold like that. I don't think many people have. <laughs> it's it quite, was quite high up, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So like me down in London, I was like, I can't get that cold. Can it? it can. <laughs> um, but really, it was, it, again, it was trying to make a film, which was, bigger than its components so mm-hmm. when you watch the film it, it feels like it's a bigger thing that you're being part of you yeah. know and using the budget you've got cleverly and using everything in a certain way to give it um a certain look mm-hmm. excellent um but yeah i can't i mean the story oh, no, line, yeah, yeah. <laughs> story line i can't really say what i can say is the film revolves around um three soldiers who are broken up from their unit mm-hmm. and they're just they're either trying to get back home or they're just trying to get back to their unit, but they're right. trying to survive. Okay. Um, and they come across certain things which change all of their lives, really. That's what okay. It is. Excellent. Thank you. No aliens um... in it already. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to spoil it, so that's fine. That's. <laughs> yeah. for that. No, I can't wait to look forward. You know, I'm looking forward to seeing that one as well. Um, because obviously, you know, like I say, it'd be nice to see that production. Um, and I I'm trying to reach out to the other guys who are involved as well. I'll have to do it, I think, when it's more towards release term, so they can actually talk about it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're Might kind be of post production at the moment, so we're yeah. we're aiming to try and get it done by. I don't really want to say actually because it's a bit of pressure. <laughs> yeah, on no, yeah, go on. Din, din, Probably din. May, if we can get it done around about May time, the whole film. Then it's then we're going to release the trailer, mm-hmm. full trailer, and then it goes to festivals. We're trying to get it into Rain Dance as its first one. Okay, excellent. And we're aiming for something again. It's trying to aim bigger. Yeah. Like rain dance and all the big ones, basically. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. No, that'd be really cool. Really cool. Um, I can't, you, you're happy to know. I'll be, I'm wrapping up now. <laughs> the questions. I mean, you know, I mean, you were clean shaven at the beginning of this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an old man now. Uh, like yeah. Ken Dodd, you know, you come on a you come on a show with Chris Gordon, and you you know you, you start it in daylight and you can finish it in daylight. <laughs> I wonder where that joke was going. Was like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> PG. <laughs> cool. So what kind of advice, obviously, for, before my signature question, what kind of advice would you have for those who might be thinking of making their own theme films, whether features or shorts? What advice to filmmakers? To, yeah, filmmakers. Um, I'd say don't let anything stop you from making something. I've met a lot of actors and a lot of 
directors and people who were stopped because of a financial thing or mm-hmm. something else. Um, I would say try and work to the locations that you can get available to you. Try and work with the people that are willing to work with you. Try and find a way to make that vision happen. And it might not turn out exactly the way that you wanted it in in your head, but it's the only way that sometimes it's the only way that you can make something is is to put, it's just to go ahead and make it. Don't sit back and sometimes hope that someone else might magically (laughs) appear at your door and say, Hey, here's, you know, yeah. Justin Bieber, that might happen, but it's. I'd I'd say just just follow your dreams and don't don't be afraid to fail as well. Mm. Don't be afraid to make mistakes because that's the whole point. Yeah. I think of getting better because the only reason oh, yeah. I could get better is from filming something and yeah, thinking in my head, <laughs> don't ever do that again. <laughs> yeah, you know, and that's it's the same with everyone. I'm sure when that like, we talked about these big directors at the beginning, but their early films they would have made mistakes a whole yeah. load of them. And now, now they're experts beyond belief. But it, <laughs> yeah, it's but... from it's from learning from. Just don't be afraid to fall down, and get back up again. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because yeah. I mean, even Sp- was it Sp- is it Spielberg that directed the first ever episode of Columbo? He did do Columbo. Yeah, yeah. He did. yeah. So you know, everyone starts out. I mean, Columbo. I mean, Columbo's bloody huge anyway, isn't it? So that's wrong. That's not, not a good analogy. <laughs> <laughs> not that first thing yeah. To do. yeah, true. Excellent. Right, and now I'll move on to my signature question. Now the story behind this. Patrick is the <laughs> last year I had a lovely guy on called uh, Mike Quinn. Uh okay. he's going to come on next year as well. Um for the timing of episode 9 of Star Wars because he was a puppeteer with Jim Henson for 30 years. He still is a puppeteer with Jim Henson's company, The Muppets. And he's okay. also nine numb in Star Wars trilogy. You know oh, wow. the, Yeah, so <laughs> Yeah, <this is> awesome. <laughs> yeah he's he's I really good. Him. So yeah, 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 so do I. He's great. Yeah. My lad calls him the monkey face man. <laughs> uh, Gre- Greedo was the best. Greedo. <laughs> Greedo was a great figure. Yeah, but <laughs> Nine Num was um. Yeah, he was. He played Nine Num, and he's he's a good. Yeah. Uh, uh, piggy, piggy, uh, you need it on set, piggy. <laughs> okay, that's go. my Kermit. <laughs> so that leads me right in, which I'm sure you can imagine, because a question was sent to me for him, and I thought it's such a good question. I try to ask everybody. What Muppet would I be? Yes, what Muppet would you be? See, you've, you you know it. You've preempted it. What Muppet character would you be? It can be a new one. It can be a mix of some. Oh, that's. Uh, I've even had Clay Crawford doing a Swedish chef impression. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Probably looks wise. Sam the Eagle, I like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, could, wise, yeah. Probably not. Um, I like Kermit. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, not being funny about it, but I like him. Yeah. Um, what's the dog called? Ralph. 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 Ralph, isn't it? Ralph. I can't do him. <laughs> but then Ralph's very musical and I'm not musical. Oh, right, fair. You can be fuzzy. Yeah. Waka, waka, waka. <laughs> no, he's just annoying, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> no one likes fuzzy. Oh, yeah. No, okay, I'm going to go with Kermit, yeah. Kermit, all right, excellent. No, that's a good choice, good choice. Is that everyone's one? <laughs> no, it's not, actually. A lot of people are, that's a lot of people are Miss Piggy. Kermit, but okay. <laughs> a lot of people are Miss Piggy. People say they're Miss Piggy, and it's like, oh, I wouldn't know why you chose Miss Piggy, to be fair. <laughs> but I think it was the controlling. Some people, recently, for the first time I've heard was the Count. You know, from Sesame Street, Varn. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. yeah, he was. He was absolutely brilliant. Um, <laughs> but, but yeah, I mean, you know, that, I thought it was a great signature question because I started this show doing impressions for people. That's all it was. Five minutes of me mucking about doing Yoda. Do or do not. There is no try. <laughs> I think I picked Kermit because I always do the impressions of my little boy. And I oh, think yeah. as he gets older, he's laughing less and less, but I just do it more and more. <laughs> you know, it's graduation, it's wedding, I'm going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to yeah. do that with my son as well, because he just sits in the car with his friends really, and he goes, Dad, Dad, do Donald, do Donald's. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and then all his friends are going, Come on, Ethan's dad, can you do your film? Do Yoda? I was like, Oh. <laughs> I can do a really good Arnie, but I won't do that now. Oh, That's... no, go on. You, you said it. No, now. You've teased no. it. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's a good. I mean, it's, it's so bad that it would you cringe with. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. And yeah, okay. Before I stop the recording, any last words that you'd like to say? Not in a nice way, obviously. I'll be back. No. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
No, I think that the words are to the people, anyone, I mean, people in the industry who are the start of the year, I think everyone struggles and they're trying to get by. And I think everyone's got this, you know, January the 1st, everyone's like pumped up. I'm going to yeah. win an Oscar. And then January the 2nd, they're like, it's over. <laughs> um, I'll just say to everyone, just, just don't give up what you're doing and, and keep yeah. doing what you're doing. And and just remember that if, if you've got a passion for something, something will come of it. And I used to be the mindset of, I can't do that. You know, I can't do that. Now I'm in the mindset. I don't know why I was Northern. But now I'm <laughs> in the mindset of, I can do that. I'll find a way to do that. Mm-hmm. You know, there is a way to achieve that and do that. Thank you very much, Patrick. I hope everybody enjoyed listening to that as much as I did chatting to Patrick, who was a fantastic guy. We had such a laugh. Uh, looking forward to seeing many more of his films and looking forward to chatting to him again, hopefully. Hope everybody enjoyed it. This has been Chris Gordon chatting with Patrick Ryder on Hellblazer Beers. Tune in on tunein.com, Podbean, YouTube, Spotify, Google Play and iTunes. Just search for Hellblazer Beers. Follow, share. Please, please, please spread the word. Thank you very much. Every little piece of support is appreciated. This has been Chris Gordon on Hellblazer Beers. Till next time.